Well, good morning, dear friends. Uh, today is February 7th, which is my two month uh, anniversary from my surgery. And this is an update. And I thought I would jump on and share what's been happening over the last few, uh, several weeks since my last update. Um, as usual, I really don't do updates unless there's something to update. And so it's no big news. My weight uh, has sort of um, stalled at times and then at times it's picked back up. I have transitioned from weighing myself daily, which I was doing uh, for the first 30 plus days. And then I've now transitioned to weighing myself weekly. Uh, my current weight is 238.2 uh, on December 7th, two months ago, I was 264, I believe, 0.2 or something like that. So obviously I have lost a significant amount of weight, um, but that's not my focus. It's about the health. And the thing that I'm most excited about is since my uh, surgery, my blood sugars have been in perfect range at this point for eight weeks or almost eight weeks. Yeah, it's been eight weeks as, actually as of today. So I'm really, really happy about that. Um, my blood pressure uh, has been pretty stable uh, for the most part, but then about, I wanna say about three weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, it started creeping up and I was a little worried. I'm like, oh no, you know, am I gonna have to get back on taking regular blood pressure medication? Not really. I take one pill uh, when it hits a certain number and then my blood pressure stabilizes again for like the next week. So I took a, a blood pressure pill uh, maybe about four days ago and the last few days my blood pressure has been what has been listed as optimal so that is excellent it's not even saying hypertension it's saying you know normal or it might say uh, elevated normal but it's not been you are you, you know in, in danger zone of hypertension or anything like that it is nothing like it was so I am really, really pleased and excited about that. That's the most important thing. Then uh, when it comes to uh, non-scale victories beyond the medication reduction, um, I am really, really happy <laughs> that, I, just, oh my gosh, December 7th, I was at between 48 and 50 in terms of uh, uh, waist inter, uh, inches. So I wore uh, some pants, I wore 50, some pants I wore 48. Um, generally, I was closer to 48 for most, 48 inches for most of them. Um, but a lot of them still, I could wear 50 and 50 was pretty comfortable. Well, I was forced to go get some new clothes a couple of days ago uh, for an event because everything I wear is incredibly saggy. So I went to the store and I am now a 42 inch waist. Let that sink in for a second. <laughs> December 7th, I was close to 50. Today I am 42 inches. I am wearing a size 42, 30 pants. I, my brain is just like, phew, can't believe it. So. I'm very pleased with the results, uh, obviously the weight, a lot of people are focused on, you know, my, my skill says this, my skill says that. I have a, a pretty set schedule in terms of my exercise, in terms of what I do, that's realistic. I, I'm not jumping in, I know I should be exercising four or five days a week. That's not gonna happen, because I know myself right now. Uh, if I start at four or five days a week, three weeks later, I'm not doing anything. So what I do is the month of January, one day a week, I would go to the gym. It is now February, I'm up to two days a week, one day at the gym and you know, where I work, I have a, a, a physical fitness center. And then one day I will exercise at home. When we get to March, it'll go to three days. When we get to April, it'll go to four days. And when we get to May, it'll go to five. 
and that's where I'll keep it at. You know, five will be my maximum. But I have to do this incrementally to build that habit, and that works for me. It might not work for you or, you know, other people, but I know myself, I know how excited I get right at the beginning of it, and then it just starts to fade off after a period of time, and I don't want that to happen. I need to be consistent. And so I need to develop that, that routine that becomes a part of my regular schedule. Just like I get up, take a shower, brush my teeth, brush my hair, get dressed, go to work, all of that stuff, my exercise has to be a part of my routine. The other things that are continuing to help, I think, with me using this tool effectively is making sure that I'm staying on top of my vitamins. And this vitamin thing actually is new to me. I was never a vitamin taker. I've, I've taken medications, obviously, uh, to kill, uh, to kill, <laughs> to heal um, or to deal with certain uh, medical issues, but I've never actually taken vitamins with any regularity until I started this process. So I look at it like, um, you know, I'm taking regular medication. So that way it's set. I know what I'm supposed to be doing and that all works out wonderfully. Um, so I take my medication for my surgery. There is one pill that I still have to take for up to four months, which helps with the healing of my pouch uh, internally. And then I take my multivitamin and I take, well, it's my multivitamin with iron. And then I will also take my calcium supplement. I have to take um, those throughout the course of the day. I separate them, obviously. And then also they are um, not when I take my multivitamins because I have to take multivitamins twice a day, once in the morning, and then I'll take one later in the evening. Um, so after my calcium supplements, I also take uh, vitamin B12. And that's all I do. I, those are my vitamins. Um, I eat, try to eat vitamin rich foods. Um, I have laid way, 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 way back from uh, the carb, the carbohydrates, specifically things like breads. Um, I allow myself two slices of bread a day. Um, so if I get a sandwich, like yesterday, I had a regular roast beef sandwich from Arby's just because, you know, it's not fried, it's not cooked in oil, it's just sliced, very thinly sliced roast beef, but they did have it on a uh, burger bun. And for me, that was my entire bread source for the day. Now, mind you, when we talk about these sandwiches, they're about that big. And it's the regular classic roast beef, not those ginormous things. Regular classic roast beef, which I don't eat. I eat it very, very rarely. I may have had two since December, you know, I had my surgery, maximum. And the first one, I just ate the meat and didn't eat the bread at all. So, um, but even with those, I don't eat it all at one time. So I'll have half of it and then I'll save the rest, the other half, and I'll eat the other half later. Um, but usually uh, a meal for me is, you know, some vegetables and protein. Protein is number one. I always make sure that 50% of whatever I have on my plate is protein based. And I use small plates or pre-portioned out little section plates. Um, I will eat cheese. I'll have yogurt. Um, I will often have um, some kefir or kefir, however you pronounce it. Um, I drink nonstop. I always have my water bottle with me. Um, this is the one that I usually drink out of my sugar bottle, which is uh, 24 ounces. And then I have a little one that I keep with me and I just drink all day long. And what I drink, I don't even know if I have any in here, but I drink a lot of those um, little juice packets, like crystal lights. So this is pretty typical. Um, so that's pretty much, you know, where I am today. I'm doing very well. I have lots of energy. I'm walking more. Um, I walk more intentionally. So, you know, instead of driving, you know, from here to here, I'll just walk. If the weather's decent, I will walk. Now, if it's freezing, I'm not walking. I'll be in my car. But I generally will walk further and, and more often. Uh, keep my Fitbit active. Um, I have to remember to charge it because I get on the go and then forget that, oh, this thing is getting low, I need to charge it. But fortunately, I have a notification that comes up on my phone 
So, and I log everything I eat. Any and everything that goes into my stomach, it is logged. Now, I do know um, it is encouraged not to continue drinking protein drinks uh, with any regularity and use them sort of as what they are, supplements or for emergency purposes. Um, I like to keep a protein drink and this particular one is Premier Protein uh, Pumpkin Spice. I don't really like it that much, but you know, I drink it. Um, I keep those in my car. So if I am on the go, which I am often, uh, one of the things that was a problem for me pre-surgery was uh, because I'm always on the go, I'm always stopping at fast food restaurants and eating and eating and eating fast food. 98% of the time I am prepping my meals and eating what I cook. Every night I eat what I cook. But there are a couple of go-to fast food places that I, I actually will utilize because they have relatively healthy foods that I can eat, um, that can be processed in my stomach, and the calories are, are limited in fat and all of that stuff. So, uh, DQ, Dairy Queen, you would think, oh my God, why do you go to Dairy Queen? Well, the only thing I get from Dairy Queen are these rotisserie chicken bites, which are actually small bite-sized pieces of rotisserie chicken. They're about that big, perfect for my pouch. They give you eight of them. So I can eat those um, and it'll fill me right up. So if I'm in a rush, so like, Today is Tuesday, and Tuesdays I literally start work at, uh, well, I can leave my house at 7.30, and then I don't usually get back to my house until about 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, because I have classes, lessons, rehearsals, doing you know administrative stuff, all kinds of stuff with my job, so I'm always all over the place. So at night, I take pick my son up, and then we'll go to my, my rehearsal at night, and we will always stop by... Uh, you know fast food place to grab something to eat and I will always go to either DQ and get those chicken bites or another option is Wendy's. Wendy's chili is wonderful. It is only 240 calories uh, for the whole container and I don't even eat all of it the small one. I don't even eat it all. I eat like half of it. Um, so I'm eating 120 calories. The fat content is low. The protein uh, is, is a decent amount of protein. It's like 14 grams of protein in, in, a, in my serving of chili that I eat. Um, it's, and it's really good chili. It's something that my body can process. And I will eat that on Tuesdays. And usually if I do the Wendy's or the DQ, it's only on Tuesdays. It's not like an everyday thing. So those are the updates as to what I'm eating, the medications that I'm currently taking, the exercise routine, uh, the scale victories, the non-scale victories. That's pretty much it, y'all. So if you are starting this journey and you're, or you're in the middle of this journey, you know, I wish you luck. This is by no means an easy path. Uh, the maintaining and continuing to lose and staying on track is probably the most difficult thing that I've ever done but it is also the thing that I value the most because I know I'm doing it for my health, which therefore means I can do more to help other people. So thank you very much for checking in with me and I hope all is well with you. Peace out, bye-bye.